welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope and I am a photographer serving both Charleston and Savannah. And this YouTube channel is where I share education for photographers, as well as a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country. And today I'm gonna talk about something that I don't normally talk about, and that is gear. I'm gonna talk about camera gear. I'm gonna talk about what you need in order to successfully start a senior portrait business. Um, and I'm gonna share some intermediate and advanced options for those of you who maybe already have a business but are looking to step up your gear and invest in some new equipment. Also, my brand new puppy is at my feet playing with his toys and that's what he has to do to stay happy, which means you're probably gonna hear a couple squeaks here and there and that's okay. Um, but before we dive into today's content, I wanted to tell you that there is a free gift for you in the description down below and it is my full senior gear checklist. So it is everything that I use in my own business currently right now um, from everything, like literally everything that's in my bag. All my cameras, all my lenses, all my gear that I take with me to senior sessions and links to all of it. So if you want a full checklist, that's down in the description below. It's completely free just as my gift to you to say thank you for watching. But today we are gonna talk specifically about the gear that you need to start a business and it might be a little bit less than you think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about cameras and lenses and then I'm gonna talk about accessories that you need. Um, but with the cameras and the lenses, I'm gonna give kind of a beginner, an intermediate and an advanced option from a budget perspective. If you're a photographer um, that is established and already has a business but wants to upgrade their gear, there'll be an option for you. If you're somebody who has never owned a camera before but you're looking to start a business, there'll be an option for you. So hopefully this will be really helpful and there's going to be links to all of the gear that I mentioned down in the description below. Okay, so let's talk about camera bodies first. And I'm a Canon shooter. I've always been a Canon shooter. Um, so I'm gonna be sharing Canon specific recommendations, but uh, a lot of the camera brands like Nikon, Sony, they have equivalent to what I'm going to be talking about, but I will be sharing Canon recommendations. So let's talk with camera bodies first. So. I started with a Canon Rebel T3i camera body. It was about $300 used when I first bought it about nine years ago. And that series of cameras, the Canon Rebel series, are what I will always recommend as starter cameras for anybody because I think they're the perfect balance of having professional quality DSLR images, but without the complexity and the price tag of something like one of the brand new mirrorless cameras. So. There's a lot of different Canon Rebel cameras at varying price points. There's T5, T6, T7, T7i. There's a lot of different varieties. I'm gonna link a few below, including the one that I started with. The one that I started with is a little bit dated now, but it would still work for what you need. So if you are a beginner looking to buy your first camera, I would recommend something in the Canon Rebel series. If you are somebody that's kind of intermediate, maybe you already have a Canon Rebel or the equivalent, I would recommend something like the 6 D be your next investment. That is a jump from a crop frame sensor to a full frame sensor camera, but it's not the price tag of the top tier camera body. So the 6D is what I jumped from when I went from a Rebel to the 6D. That was like the perfect middleman option for me. So the Canon 6D is what I would recommend for somebody that's a little bit more intermediate. And if you are advanced or you're a photographer looking to just really level up your gear this year, I currently shoot with a 5D Mark III and a Canon R6. So the Mark III now, I have two of these bodies. I actually might have three. Um, this is what I have shot with for almost all of my professional career. Um, however, at this point, they are now pretty dated. Um, they're pretty cheap compared to, I spent almost $3,600 on these bodies when I bought them back in, I wanna say 2015 or 2016. Um, they're very sad and old and they probably need a lot of repairs and replacements done to them, but they're my tried and true. I love them to death. This is a great kind of intermediate slash advanced option. It's a little more expensive than the 6D, but it is an amazing camera body. Um, the R6 is Canon's newest mirrorless camera. I absolutely love it. I just added it to my lineup a year ago. It's the most expensive and kind of advanced as far as being user friendly. It's a little bit trickier to use. You have to really understand how to use a camera and manual, but it's incredibly sharp, incredibly fast, and just the technology behind it is amazing. So this is like top, top tier if you're somebody that's just really looking to have the best of the best and has the budget to allow for that. 
when it comes to senior portraits, I only take one body with me to my senior sessions. For a wedding day, I have all three of my camera bodies in my bag so that if anything goes wrong, I have a replacement. I don't think that's quite as necessary for a senior photographer. I think it's necessary to have some type of backup so that if something does go wrong, you know that you have a backup camera to go to. Um, but I don't think it's as necessary to have duplicates of the exact same body because it's much less likely that something's gonna go wrong at a two hour portrait session compared to a 10 hour wedding day. So a 50 millimeter is what I would recommend to you if you are just starting out in your senior portrait business or if you wanna level up your current 50 millimeter lens, I'm gonna list all my favorite options. So for a beginner, my favorite option would be the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. It is a lens that is around $100. It is an amazing starter option for you um, because it creates really beautiful crisp images with a lower aperture and a really beautiful focal length. So the 50 millimeter 1.8 is what I would recommend to anybody wanting to get started with senior portraits. If you're looking in the intermediate price range and you're maybe wanting to upgrade from that 50 millimeter 1.8, the Sigma Art 1.4 is a really awesome option for you. Um, it's obviously the only thing I'm recommending that's not Canon. Um, you just wanna be sure you buy the Sigma lens that is made for Canon cameras, but it is the 50 millimeter that I used for a really long time. It's the 50 millimeter 1.4 Art lens. Um, it's around $1,000, so it's not quite as expensive as the Canon L series version. Um, but I actually sometimes like it better than the Canon L series version. So that's an amazing option if you are somebody that's intermediate. If you are advanced and looking to really level up, the 50 millimeter 1.2 Canon L series, it's the most expensive and high end lens you can get for a DSLR. If you're looking for a mirrorless lens, you'll wanna start looking at the Canon RF lineup. I don't have any RF lenses. I don't think it's necessary to have RF lenses necessarily. Um, if you're somebody that's just now getting your first mirrorless camera, camera, but that would be then like the advanced, advanced level that I don't even have. So those are the 50 millimeters that I would recommend. Again, they are all linked in the description. Okay, so now let's talk about some must-have accessories um, because these are all, some of them are kind of common sense and then some of them are things that I didn't think about needing um, until I was a few years into my business. Also, my puppy is playing with his Kong in the background and there's cheese in it and he's trying really hard to get at it. So sorry if you hear that noise. Um, but a few accessories. So let's talk memory cards really quickly. This was something that I didn't know a lot about in the early seasons of my business and the fact that the speed of your memory card and how fast it can write images to it really, really matters, especially if you're shooting in raw, which you should be doing. If you are shooting professionally, you should be shooting raw images. And raw files are much larger than a JPEG, so if your camera is trying to capture a raw image and write it to the memory card, but you're using a slow memory card, your camera's going to freeze up and you're not gonna be able to shoot quickly. And if you've ever watched me shoot in any of my courses or in the Senior Scoop membership, then you know that I shoot very, very, very fast. And in order to do that, I have to have very high speed memory cards. So if you're somebody that's shooting in JPEG right now because you're just practicing, then you can get away with some of the slower cards. I have the black SanDisk Pro Extreme CF and SD cards. I'm gonna link them below, but they are the, more, the most expensive, but they are the fastest and they are necessary for me to be able to shoot quickly and have my images write quickly to the memory card. Um, and I actually buy all mine in bulk on Black Friday from Best Buy because they go on sale. Um, I have way too many to count, but they are the cards that I use and have for years and absolutely love them. Um, another miscellaneous accessory that you're probably going to want is some type of camera camera strap. Um, that's kind of a bonus. It's like a want, not a need, but I use the black rapid camera strap and I love it. Um, photo strap are also really beautiful options if you want something custom engraved or with a pretty pattern. So I'll link both of those below. I also use a reflector at every single one of my senior sessions. Again, if you've seen me shoot, you've seen me use it. It has a handle on it. I love it. I'm going to link it below. That is something that's really helpful with creating beautiful lighting on your client's skin. And then the last thing that you're going to need is an editing software. Um, I have and will always use Lightroom for this. Um, you can create an Adobe account and download Lightroom. You can also download the bundle that has Lightroom and Photoshop, which is what I have and highly recommend. I edit 
all of my images for the lighting in Lightroom, and then I do any beauty related blemish fixes or more advanced edits in Photoshop. But those are pretty much the basics of what you need to get started in the senior portrait world. My hope is that this was kind of reassuring and encouraging to you if you're somebody that's trying to get started and overwhelmed with all of the lens options that you could get um, to hear that you might only need one. Starting with that 50 millimeter could get you as far as you need to go because like I said, I'm 10 years in and I still shoot almost all of my sessions with the 85 millimeter. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And again, if you wanna download that free checklist in the description, it has links to all of these things and some of my other lenses that are in my bag and in my kit. I hope this was useful. I would love to have you subscribe to watch my new videos every single week, but until next time, bye y'all.